in the whole world as we speak is going to have to start realizing that the most precious thing we have is the planet Earth and the people who live on it. And unless we start doing things to bring people together, to help each other and to love each other, we might end up killing the whole concept of the human race on the planet Earth. And my whole career has been built on trying to bring people together. And I've done it. It's been very successful in a lot of ways. When I lived in Israel, I remember having a show and I brought the Palestinians and the Jews together and Haim Herzog cried. He didn't ever think that, that was possible. And in Bosnia, we had the, my wife and I, Carol, had the Peace Corps call me after the war there. They wanted to bring the people together, the Christians. And uh, it was incredible. It's hard to talk about how that was, bringing people together, because it all started because the Muslims and the Christians were living together in a place called Banya Luka. And a few men, four or five men, decided they didn't like that. And that's how the war got started. And the war now, as it ended and it was over, they had to find a way to come back together. And they chose my artwork because my artwork identified everybody as the human race. And the judgment we have shouldn't be have anything to do with your color or how much money you have or what religion you have. It's about your character. It's how you treat other people. And most of all, it's how you treat Mother Earth. Because when I lived in um, Kenya, it was just horrible watching the big ships dump their garbage into the ocean. All these things are things we have to think about now. But they always ask me, how can we have a better relationship with the black community? And my answer to them was very, very easy, very quick, ministerial alliance. And once we got them together, for the first time, black people were talking to white people and they were concerned about their city. And one of the most important things was getting rid of the slums and also having an outlet, a positive outlet for kids, getting kids off the street. The policemen have been very good friends of ours. In fact, they were the ones who were involved in running Seedman Center and Style Center. And we did that on purpose because we wanted the kids and the police to be together. And we wanted the kids to realize police are not your enemies, they're your friends. They're here to help you and protect you. And they risk their lives. So I hope we don't let one or two events happen that destroy the image we have of the police and what they do and how they save us. George Floyd will always go down in our history. And I never ever imagined that our whole country, our whole city would revolve around and protest him being lynched. And I call that lynched because that's what the policemen did to him. And that's what used to happen a long time ago. And some of the things we have to remember that the police department have to be and should be our friends that we trust. And there are some of them that will spoil it as we have in many institutions where a few can spoil something really good and we can't let that happen. And to the protesters, please, whatever you do, don't become violent. Don't lose the message of why you're protesting. Because we're protesting not only in Grand Rapids, but around the country and in other countries. We're a great example. And that's the kind of thing that we want to be as the United States of America, bringing all people together for a good cause that benefits us all that we all will never forget. Mr. George Floyd will not have died in vain. What happened to him hopefully will never happen again because now we can do something that we have never had 
the ability to do before or we did, but it didn't make a difference. If a policeman does something, we can take him and we can protest and we can let the law do what it's supposed to do as it would with anyone else. They are not going to hide behind their badges. You know, 9-11 was a good example how the people who were running out, it was the policemen and the firemen who were running in. And we have to keep those things in mind. We have to keep in mind that we have to be an example. We have a democracy, a democracy that says all people are equal, women, men, and all colors. And that's what my work represents. And I hope today, with what's going on, we can finally realize violence accomplishes absolutely nothing. It only splits us apart. And we have to realize that we got to get our government so it's not divided. We got to get our people so they're not divided and come back and realize that we all have too much in common. And what's most important is the images that our kids see of who we are and what we are. And that's so important. That's what we try to do. And that's what we've really done a great job, I think, of accomplishing Grand Rapids. We've come a long ways in Grand Rapids. And I love this city. And once again, I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm just saying it's a good example for other cities and for the country to do what we've done here in Grand Rapids. My mother has so much to do with it. Uh, and some of the stories, I, whenever I'd come home and tell mom about something that was wrong, discrimination, she'd always say to me, what are you going to do about it? Everybody's talking about ministers, sinisters, banisters, canisters, fire shops and fire shops, drive and car fires, bye-byes and bye-byes. All we are saying.